Good evening, everybody. It is your favorite aspiring evolutionary here, a wandering author, reminding you that we are all the authors of our own lives. As always, my message remains the same. Spend less, live more, earn your freedom with frugality. Today we'll continue with a little bit more of the uh, Greek history, just because it does take quite a while to make the uh, whiteboards for my Nicomachean Ethics videos, although I've got plenty of more of that coming along the way. <laughs> to su sum summarize, the um, training program at the company I work at now in my personal life incredibly well designed. Um, basically the training team acted incompetent but obviously it was an act and the reason why is this is a managerial position. Basically they, they were coaxing me into acting like a leader myself. I thought it was really well done. <laughs> um, I imagine that somebody at some point who designed the program has some kind of like military background or something. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, being back home has been super awesome. Um, super uneventful. At this point in the summer or like at the end of the year, basically nobody's around the lake. So it's been, there's, there's nothing to that. There really hasn't been anything going on here. So it's been very relaxing. Anyways, we'll pick up last, uh, yesterday we spoke about the Archidamian War and how Pericles spoke to the Athenians about um, their democracy and Brasidas got in there. And eventually uh, the, the first conflict between Sparta and Athens is ended with the peace of Nicias, which um, Thucydides even says was kind of a farce right from the beginning. <laughs> Above all, Alcibiades was an old style aristocrat at odds with the Athenian democracy's collectivism. He claimed to espouse older heroic virtues. Hashtag conservatives. Finally, in 418, the Tegeans asked Sparta for help against the Athenians, and even though Spartan reinforcements helped them triumph over Athenian forces and Matinea, the peace of Nicias remained intact against the odds. <laughs> However, the allies, uh, the allied Athens cultivated in the allies Athens cultivated in the, in the Peloponnese returned under Sparta's sphere of influence. Only, Ar only the Argives retained their democracy. So, <laughs> all of this war to preserve Greek liberty really enslaved a lot of Greeks. Meanwhile, Hyperbolus, who's a leader, will be exiled in 417, the last ostracism that's ever performed in Athens leaving Alcibiades and Nicias as rivals. And in 416, Athens exterminates the entire male population of Melos and enslaved every woman and child they could find. Thucydides had the Athenians justify the Melian atrocity by saying, might makes right. And then in uh, 415, the Athenians send out a group of people on what's called the Sicilian Expedition. Launch, and this is their, their most ambitious campaign yet. It's actually a full-scale invasion of Sicily, which is like a small island off the coast of Italy. Thucydides recounts this as a tale of an, uh, as, uh, using a tale of an omen occurring just prior to the Athenian Navy's departure when a dozen statues of Hermes, you know the guy from Hercules, like the, the movie, icon of travelers, um, was desecrated, desecrated. This act of sacrilege would be construed as part of a conspiracy to bring about a revolution and to subvert the democracy. <laughs> Destroying these wayward statues across the empire required impressive sophistication, something only possible among the elites of the time. And this was clearly an attack on the Sicilian expedition's voyage and on democratic forces at large, otherwise known as the Damos in the original Greek. <laughs> The ensuing witch hunt saw Athenian patrols wandering the streets, boulevards, and avenues of Athens and Piraeus, desperately searching for the statue desecration culprits. Remember, those statues, while they remind us of the Disney movie Hercules today, back then, um, were actually like worshipped. So this was an act of serious sacrilege to have all of those statues destroyed at one time. And at the hysteria's height, Alcibiades and his crew are accused of conducting the mysteries of Eleusius, which probably utilized psychedelics in some capacity, in a private home with the non-initiates present, which was against the rules. And owing to his recent Olympic victory, the Athenian public was afraid. <laughs> Alcibiades usurped a Spartan title at the Olympics and celebrated his victory by commissioning an epigram from Euripides. 
Ath Athenian authorities soon gathered word that some of the city's wealthiest citizens were implicated in the Hermes statue scandal. So this was literally like an oligarchical conspiracy that occurred. And dozens of them are executed in retaliation. At least that's what the historical record tells us. Of course, as somebody who always wants to hashtag disrespect authority, <clears throat> my thought is maybe that right there is just like what the people wanted. And, and there was basically like an inter... Uh, uh, there, there was fighting between the oligarchs, potential oligarchs, and, and some of them died. Then a dispatch is sent to Alcibiades requesting his return, but he fled into southern Italy instead of acquiescing. He switches sides and becomes a Spartan advisor, eventually turning the table on Athens during their invasion of Sicily in 414. On the sixth day of their retreat, Athenian forces surrendered, having dropped from 20k to 6k total <clears throat> after enemy harassment and general attrition. Both Demosthenes and Nicias are captured and executed after eight days of retreating, and their men either died or were sold into slavery. At this point, Athens' manpower reserves had fallen to one-third of its pre-war levels. And we're talking about the men that could actually, you know, serve in hoplite armies. So they are basically annihilated at this point, driving increased desperation to find recruits and a growing reliance on mercenary forces to do most of the dirty work. Money became this war's key player. Hashtag history never changes. Earlier, Athenian representatives amended the tribute system and created a flat tax, 5% of import tax, as a replacement which alleviated some of the financial strain shouldered by the wealthy from the war. So basically, the really rich in Athens offloaded the war's cost to the poor. Um, hashtag classic leadership. Piraeus, is, is their equivalent tax rate in Piraeus remained at 2%, which was to attract even more trade over there. And by spring of 413, Spartans were busy planning an additional invasion of Attica after Argive and, and Athens had raided Laconia together the year prior, <laughs> thus starting the Ionian War, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Um, now that I'm managing a Canvas team, definitely have a lot of leadership-related tasks to be taken care of, so... Uh, Apologize, especially I've been traveling so much and I've got a lot of travel upcoming. I'm still writing all of my content, but um, I haven't, I, I've missed a couple of days on my videos. Anyways, this is a wondering author here re, re, to remind you that we are all the authors of our own lives. As always, my message remains the same. Spend less, live more, earn your freedom with frugality. What are you guys doing in order to inspire, uplift, and empower your local community today? Because this world isn't changing unless we all do our part. You can count on me to do mine daily. Until next time, I love y'all.